So there was, I mean, <laughs> there's umpteen stories about Templeton Rye, you know. And, and, in stockyards and people come up to talk to you like this. That wasn't a surprise. I mean, you, you probably knew that, that you had this reputation that from being a part of the state. And oh, sure, sure. You know, and then other people, they would get to hear that, you know. Then there would be more of them chime in and tell stories about that. Like uh, Gene Weiss mentioned the Stockyards Inn. Well, that's generally where you'd stay if you went there. But, I mean, it wasn't the fanciest place. But everybody knew about Tim. <laughs> If they were over 50 years old when I was 30, they knew about Templeton Rye in Chicago, okay? So it wasn't just that it was popular at the Stockyard Inn or at the Stockyards. It, it, that was the way they brought it into town, was in those trucks, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, base. you know, you never had any of your trucks in the 60s. Huh? No, no, we did not. But, uh, I mean, you know, most of the car moved, or most of the whiskey moved from Templeton to Chicago, probably in cars. You know, I mean, just like we have the drugs today, you know, you don't, you don't load a semi up with them, you know, you try to hide it. So, so basically that's what this was, because it was illegal at the time. Can you tell us more about the methods as far as cars or any stories that you've heard about how they would do that? Well, I didn't hear anything more than he said that a Ford cars, that was the car of that. And then they would take them places and soup the cars up so that they were a lot more powerful than, and go a lot faster than police cars. So that was the car of choice, was uh, Ford's. And then they would take the back seats out and stuff and maybe make just a fake back seat, you know, and the floorboards, they'd lift them up and, and put whiskey there. I mean, they'd hide that stuff. And then you, you know, that old guy told me, he said he was responsible for that whiskey. Now, when he got there, if he loaded, uh, 20 gallons, I'll just say, you know, there are better be 20 gallons in that car when he got there. You know, uh, well, everybody knows how Al Capone operated. Wasn't good. <laughs> so, <laughs> but... Uh, I didn't question you too much, but was, did, you, did you get the impression he was working for Al Capone? He was working for Al Capone. Mm -hmm. Right. So they, so they were just sending people here to Templeton or here to Carroll County to pick it up and bring it back. And, and he knew Al Capone pretty well, you know. They didn't hire just anybody, and, and he came by this a way of maybe working in Chicago for him, doing different things, not gangland type stuff, but working for him in some manner or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, Did you get a sense on how many different drivers and how frequent? Oh, he said that there would be somebody here, out here, you know, every week, or maybe two or three times a week, you know, and taking whiskey back, you know, and he was a fun guy. Yeah, when I was only seven.